Hallo. Hallo. Joey's video is not showing up on the stream screen, even though it's showing up on my playing screen. I mean, I'm doing everybody a favor by not appearing. <laughs> there we go. Now we're all on screen. And the audio was still working through that. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Uh, uh, Joey, you are first on my screen tonight. Oh, awesome. Well, hey, everybody. I am Joey. I am playing Connor Leone, the Firecatcher. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry? Hi, I'm Terry. I play as James. You've heard of uh, the man who's had pocket sand. Now there's a man with bucket of sand. I put out fires. I am the nerd, the healer, or the, well, the doctor, kind of. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much me. You'll have a doctorate at some point. At one point. Maybe multiple. Yeah, Who knows? And I'm Birdie. Um, lucky shot extraordinaire. There we go. That was a very good lucky hey. shot last week. It was. Yes. <laughs> Murder bird lives on. <laughs> so you have made it uh, across the country to Nairobi, which is a fairly new uh, city. Uh, it's pretty small. Only about 8,000 people live here. Oh, goodness. That's not a city. That's a town. <laughs> Well, uh, it is, what is in the neighboring country is farms and villages. So as far as the people around here are concerned, this is a city. And it actually has a railway station coming directly to town. So over time, it is definitely going to be built up. But for now, this is what you're working with. Okay. Uh, you have your choice of hotels in town. As you're arriving fairly early in the morning, the train ran overnight. <laughs> there is the Hampton House Hotel, which is suitable for people on a budget. And the Norfolk Hotel, which is a top quality establishment. Cool, cool. Where do you feel like resting your weary bones? Well, we're going to get followed and chased by somebody either way. Let's at least go for the top quality establishment. Let's live in some luxury this time around. Fair enough. Where is it? Come on, I've got maps for all these places. I believe we also need to make some calls. Well, when you say make calls, you mean you're going to be calling on people and visiting them at their houses or offices because there aren't telephones here. Uh. row. Is there at least a phone in the hotel? It starts melting. Like at the front desk? You can send a telegraph if you go to the railway station. Uh, okay. Well, I guess First before thing... we go anywhere from the railway, from from the train station, um, we'll go and send a message to the people that we promised we would send messages to, informing yep. them of where we're at. Okay. Yep. So that includes. And that there are no telephones. <laughs> that includes your contact at the newspaper in Cairo and your lawyer back in New York, I assume. Yep. Yep. That is no problem. Uh, you are assured that number one, your uh, 
your messages will go through. And number two, uh, they will send a runner with any messages that arrive for you to your hotel where messages will be kept at the front desk for you. All right. Awesome. Let's see. I don't know what all this music is, so we're just going to try some songs till we find something good. For some reason, the music is quiet for me. You should be able to adjust that uh, by going to playlists on the. Oh well. Yeah, go to playlists and then adjust the volume of the playlists to the place they appear. Mm hmm. I always have to turn mine down a bit. <laughs> It's at 2% for nice. <laughs> Uh So it is a luxurious hotel, and you can see there is dining on the veranda. Uh, there is a bar with billiards uh, and a lounge. Uh, it's actually a two-story hotel. If we need the second story, I'll bring it in, but for now, I think we're good. Yeah. Following the British convention, this is the ground floor, and the second story is the first floor, which always confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> I played Neopets, and that's how they did that, so I've got it down pretty good. <laughs> it is it is so strange. Uh, if you want to call up your journals... You can see I made a list of your of the contacts you know about, um, and a link to Hammer's Nairobi notes. All right. Aja Singh is no longer relevant. His uh, his warehouse, he has a warehouse in Mombasa. You chose not to visit it while you were there, so he doesn't have a presence here. Okay. <clears throat> Which we will probably regret in the future. Oh well. I mean, not necessarily. I want to make you aware of all of your options. It doesn't need, mean that all of them are vital. Okay. So before we run in anywhere and start talking to anybody, I suggest we actually put together our story beforehand. <laughs> All right. First off, I suggest we don't actually tell anyone here that Hammer has passed. And, uh... Perhaps we say that we are associates of his. Following up on some of his notes, because the man was a disorganized mess. <laughs> what do we think? Does it sound like a bad idea? I like it. And there's one travel out here that quick, seeing as how everything's been going. You say quick. It is uh, either April or May, and he died in January. Yeah, but everywhere else we've gone to, not everybody knew right away until actually talking to someone to find out more. 
absolutely fair. We Just do not have. Sure you know how much time has passed. Yeah. Yep. We do not have the internet here. So. True. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It is May the twelfth. can also, you didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, so you can choose to take it easy no. for a day or two if you choose to. That might be for the best. <laughs> might be a good idea. Let us get our bearings, maybe hire a local kid to be a guide again, <laughs> find Connor a motorcycle. <laughs> Maybe do a little bit of trinket shopping. Yeah. It's not, Just it's not that much of a tourist destination, but rich people wanting to go on safari will often come through here, which is mm -hmm. exactly what the Carlisle expedition did. Yep. So there is stuff to buy. Um, they are used to foreigners and to be honest, there's a fairly large British presence here. Lots of people speak English. If you choose to go outside of Nairobi to the smaller villages, you're going to want to hire an interpreter. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Um, if you spend a little time Heading around the city. Uh, you spot the government house, which is a large colonial style building flying the Union Jack. Uh, there's a large park in the center of the town, surrounded by eucalyptus leaves, uh, eucalyptus trees, which is the, uh, the city square. You find the post office, which is open 9 to 5. Dalton and Son Trading Post, which is advertises that they have everything the intrepid, intrepid adventurer needs for a trip into the back country. Shopping uh, trip. <laughs> Shopping. Shopping. Yeah, be a bad idea. Shopping. New outfits. <laughs> okay, a, a I just lost his because of... no, you didn't lose it. It's just a little card. Mm -hmm. All right. You all getting safari outfits? Getting khaki and everything? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Uh. There's a mosque. There's a cathedral. Um, there's there's actually a fairly large Asian population here because this is kind of how Britain runs their colonies. Mingle populations. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's an Indian bazaar. There's a Nairobi market, which is where locals will shop. Uh, I will be in. Okay. There's the Kikuyu uh, Central Association, which is uh, the local tribesmen are Kikuyu, and this is their political group. There's an industrial area south of town with uh, breweries and warehouses and uh, abattoirs. You know I'm going to want to check out that brewery. Uh, <laughs> you can you can make an attempt. They don't really offer plant tours, but uh, if you fast talk your way in there then, or charm your way in there. <laughs> I'm absolutely going to make an attempt to charm my way in there to see their process. Okay. I'm a f I, I'm a businesswoman. I have 
I, I have motives aside from just helping our friend James. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also see outside of town uh, Fort Smith, which is the King's African Rifles Barracks. Just from the size of it, you can tell there are hundreds of soldiers there. Of course. Are you spending the day just getting yourselves outfitted and looking for what's for sale in the Indian market and the, uh, the Nairobi market? And... Yep. Okay. Definitely picking up some local spices. Yeah. Absolutely. Just uh, getting a feel of the place before we irreparably damage it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> or save it. You don't know. Uh, we're we're going to get the a brief tourist experience first to feel what it's normally like. And then we're going to get into the, hey, this is the weird stuff that happens here. <laughs> uh... Yeah, in the Nairobi markets, this is, again, where locals would shop, so you're not going to need to buy the beans and meat and fish and all that sort of stuff. They've got a nice restaurant back at the hotel. But they have textiles. But I, am picking up this, I am picking up them spices. You can grab spices, you can get textiles and pottery if you're interested. Mm-hmm. Uh, you take it easy all day long. <laughs> yep. Uh, what are you curious about at the brewery? Is this something you want to try to go do right away, or just while you're here at some point? Just while we're here at some point. Okay. Just get in there, see uh, what trade secrets I can get out of them, what I can trade them for, no, uh, see you're... if they know any of the local gossip. Is your family involved in making beer or just liquor? Mostly liquor. Okay. So th they don't really have a distillery here. They have breweries, mm -hmm. so they, they're making beer. Yeah. That doesn't mean but it's of it no is. interest to you. But Yeah. See how their uh, flavoring process, their aging process, all that. See what I could potentially use. Maybe make some suggestions for them for uh, new spice combos if they use anything <laughs> with spices. Okay. I'm gonna turn this into Dune. <laughs> <laughs> spice everywhere. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a very pleasant day. How about mm -hmm. the rest of you? Anything in particular you want Needed to do on rest. vacation day? Yeah, you got to rest for sure. Um, clothes. Probably just walking around. Probably all it is is just be walking around, getting to know the uh, the area a little bit better. Okay. Uh, and um. James, you will find out that there is the sense of history is here is different here than it was in Egypt. In Egypt, it's oh, um, yeah. it's monuments from thousands of years ago are present everywhere. Here, uh, you know people have been here forever. But it's not so much monuments. Everything is built pretty recently. There's no museums. If you want to get involved in archaeology or history around here, it's going to be a different practice than what you're used to. Something new. That'll be interesting. Let's do it. And, uh, Connor. Anything in particular you care about in the city? Might be muted. 
sorry. Sorry, something was said to me. My needed to be re-updated. I was just mm. saying, if you, um, I'm just asking if you have anything you want to do while you're all exploring the city for the day. I'm mean, just, uh, just trying the new food, drinking the new drinks, and, you know, finding a new coat if I need one, you know, typical tourist things, because my coat, it's not gonna blend in anymore. Nope. No. No, you will... You can blend in with some of the rich Europeans by getting, you know, his helmet and some khaki gear. <laughs> Do you want to look God. British? <laughs> no. Well, <you're> no, <laughs> not at all. There's, there's more Europeans than just British people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but it's a British colony. What is that? <laughs> Yeah, just trying to find uh, an outfit that works for him. It doesn't really matter if it's, you know, European or whatever. Whatever is comfortable and is heat resistant, he is fine with. Okay. Because, you know, Con Connor is about practicality, not the appeal. That is a good call. Uh, so, yeah, you can get some tough, breathable material. Uh, we are, as we've been with the B crew all this time, we're going to assume that anybody that's not with you is doing pretty much the same thing, but in a different group. Yep. Okay. Uh, and in the evening, uh, as you take your meal on the veranda of the hotel, are you trying, um, so this is a white people hotel. You can mm -hmm. get comfortable British food, but they do offer a variety of, uh, of more exotic fare if you want to be adventurous and eat an antelope. I'm going to request that the cook make us his favorite meal, or her favorite meal. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, you end up with some roast chicken, uh, some potatoes, uh, some yeasty bread rolls, and a blood pie. Um, it is not different from what you could have gotten back in England, but it is very well prepared. Fair enough. Hmm. Uh, and then, wandering around the veranda as, as you're eating, uh, you see a newspaper seller. And he goes up to each table Oop. and offers a newspaper, and he comes over to, makes his way over to your table eventually. And he says, Good evening, folks. Would you like to buy a copy of the Nairobi Star, the uh, best newspaper in town? Be honest, how many other newspapers are there? I uh, will ask as I'm handing him money. There is one other newspaper in town, ma'am. <laughs> but I can assure you that the Nairobi Star is the better of the two. Uh... Ms. Smythe Forbes is a fine lady and a hard worker. In fact, if you look down the street, you can see the lights burning in the office right now. Oh, really? Oh, Take yes. For it. She writes everything in the paper. She typesets it. She, She's the owner, the reporter, the publisher, everything. And she makes sure that we have a newspaper to put out every single day. I certainly respect a woman who uh, d does the job herself. Out of I curiosity, have... does she ever take visitors? Uh, well, yes, if you want to go in and um, she does offer a subscription service. There, She does offer ad space. And if you have any news that needs to be reported, she's always happy to take it down. 
Lovely. Oh, we might have to stop in there tomorrow. That, I'm sure she'd be happy to have the visitor. Uh, if she is out and about at the time, reporting on something, just come back in the evening. That's when she's most likely to be there. But I will let her know that somebody's planning to stop by. Fantastic. Thank you so much, dear. Thank and you I'll give him well. a little tip. <laughs> uh, he's going to tip his hat to you. And then he's going to wander off down the street and continue to sell newspapers. Uh, Love your one. adventure is the cover story, of course. The fiery train. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How accurate is it? <laughs> uh, it is pretty accurate. It doesn't mention sorcery or fiery spirits, but it's about saboteurs. And while the group of you are not mentioned by name, um, because it says that the police investigation is still ongoing, it does mention uh, some heroic passengers who helped to, uh, to stop the saboteurs, drive them to the train, and uh, put out the conflagration. All right. Well, if we don't go visit her, I think she's going to be visiting us. Possible. Uh, also, you have found that newspapers are like a good source of knowledge if you want to do the bets. So, Always and a I'm just gonna, f I'm just gonna flip through this paper, look at what seems to be normal for this town for news, see if there's any like odd occurrences that are mentioned. Uh, well, it is actually a single-sheet newspaper. Oh, uh, okay. It seems that there's not a whole lot of news in a town this size. But uh, okay. there is there are reports on um, official actions of the local government. Uh, there is a not especially local weather forecast. Uh, it looks like it's reprinted out of an almanac. Ah. And, uh, I don't think that astrology charts are necessarily what's reported in here, but something similar to that. There's a little, um, there's a little woo-woo section. Okay. I will check that out, because, of course. Mm-hmm. See, see what uh, the superstitions around here are. Oh, uh, this is this is a British newspaper. Uh, it's local. Oh yeah. But yeah, Fair. this is a British lady writing it. So less interesting, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do, you do get the impression from reading it though that. So there's no impression that she knows like the, the dark secrets behind the universe that you've been privy to lately. Yeah. But unlike your last uh, newspaper correspondent, uh, she does not appear to be a skeptic. Okay. We might have to be cautious around her in that case. Skeptics are almost always safer than believers in this kind of universe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, can, you can always feel her out and see if she's just superstitious or if she has real occult knowledge. Or if she's secretly working with the cult. That's also possible. Uh. Uh, but... It is a pleasant evening. If you are done for the day, you can go to bed and sleep off your adventure and sleep off that honestly fairly heavy meal. Yeah. Good meal. Uh, process a little bit of the trauma of having fire demons attack us. 
I hope we don't get attacked by more fire demons. <laughs> yeah, uh, you are honestly safe tonight. I am going to uh, give Luna some very, very good chin scratches and say, I hope you realize you are charged with warning us if anything supernatural does happen. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would have had, um, like some of the inner chicken, like cut out like a little slice, left it on a plate. For Luna to go and eat. I like to think that Connor still doesn't understand the whole Luna thing and is like, we just got a cat, guys. What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) No, trust me. Legitimately, it is just a cat. Yeah, it is like... No, no, no. She's special. Okay. Uh, uh, she you... is just a cat. But... Have you explained about your necklace to anybody else, or is it just, you know, you're just wearing it? No, I'm just wearing it. Okay. No, I haven't explained anything yet. It's just there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to remind you that besides... Besides reading the tomes that you have, you can also leverage them in Cthulhu Mythos checks. So if you have time, Ooh. if you have time to, like when you're out in the field, not so much. But if you bring knowledge back with you and you can sit down with a book and look through it, when you make a Cthulhu Mythos roll, there's a stat on the book itself that you're going to be rolling yeah. against instead of your own internal knowledge. Okay. Okay. Uh, And if you want to, you can take another few days to, you know, rest up from your, from your uh, burning train adventure. Uh, But at some point, you feel like you probably need to justify your paycheck again. I mean, given what happened uh, back in Egypt, I think we probably have a little bit of a sense of urgency. We're taking one, two days to recuperate, and then we're getting right back to it. Absolutely fair. Ugh. And then, yeah, I'd love to go visit the paper. Okay. Small town like this, I don't feel like it's quite as necessary for us to follow the buddy system. But, it's a good idea not to split the party if you guys are interested in going. Yeah, I don't see a problem. Why not? Alright. And again, our story is that we are friends of Hannah following up on his shoddy notes. Ah. Sorry, Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like cross yourself and look into the sky when you say sorry, Hammer? Or... <laughs> Just <Okay. laughs> looking up at the sky at a single hand. Far <laughs> left of Fox can take the swing. <laughs> Close the swing. <laughs> That's how he respects the dead. Uh... He gets a drink. He takes a drink for him. Uh, when you head on inside, you can see, uh, there, there was a, maybe a slight exaggeration in the, uh, the zeal of the paper boy. Uh, there are a couple other people working in the building. There's a typographer and a couple of people <laughs> actually running the printing presses. Figures. But, but there's a, <laughs> you do see a middle-aged lady sitting at a desk and typing away on a typewriter. Okay. And, uh, She's pretty intent on what she's typing, but if you approach the desk, then she will look up to you. Just drop. You can see the map, correct? Yes. Okay. I always got to make sure that the setting is correct. See it. 
Also, so I'm just I gonna might... throw it out there that it's a very nice touch that almost all of these maps have a visible bathroom. <laughs> I am going to uh, refresh the page because I do not see uh, Birdie. I'm, I'm dropping them on the map as I go. I mean, I don't. I see the names, but I don't see the token. Oh, okay. As you approach the desk, uh, she is going to look up from her typewriter and say, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you come in. Uh, how may I help you? Are you here to place an ad? Would you like a subscription? Well, we actually have a few questions. Um, first off, I saw the... Uh, Day and figured we should introduce ourselves as the intrepid passengers in question, since I have no doubt that you will have questions for us later. Oh! Well, this is a pleasure. Come sit down. Would you like tea or <laughs> water? Or, um, we ha I'm sure we have something a little stronger. It might be a bit early in the day for you. I'm not sure. Andrew, you got very muffled. Yeah, you're, I think the cat did something. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Much better. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Actually, the AV server cut out for just a moment, so uh, it's fixed now. Okay. Uh, so she offers you tea or water, something a little stronger, maybe, even though she knows it's early in the day. <laughs> water would be lovely. All right. Um, she gets up to get it herself. Uh, there's... He was exaggerating, but not by that much. There's not a whole lot of staff in here. Uh, okay. But she'll come back with a, a pitcher of water and some glasses for everybody. I will gladly sit across from her. Mm -hmm. Well, what what do you know of this of this attack? Was it some sort of uh, political group, criminals? Uh, a little bit of it was a little bit of both I'd say uh, it was one man in particular who uh, fortunately was startled off the train at the end but I do not think that that is the last anyone will be seeing of him but we did not get a good look at him unfortunately and your attacker survived the incident as far as I can tell, I saw him get up, unfortunately. Which means there might be more. They might they might not be done sabotaging the trains coming to town. That is a, a grave matter. It's uh, unfortunate, to say the least. <sighs> well, I must say, we, we in town are all very grateful to you. Uh, if the train had been derailed or destroyed, it would take some time to clear the tracks. And we're pretty isolated all the way out here. I, I can certainly see that. <laughs> Frankly, it's a nice change of pace. Ah, have you been, uh, well, I, I hear your accent. You're from the American South, aren't you? I am indeed. We have been to New York and England and Egypt over the past few months and still have quite a few more places to go. Uh, a small town like this is a nice taste of home for me. <laughs> yes, you have a taste of home and a taste of the exotic all at the same time, don't you? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I have to ask... The police were hesitant to give out your names because they said that the investigation was ongoing. How do all of you feel about your names being in the paper? 
Well, frankly, that's one of the things I wanted to come to speak with you about. Uh, unfortunately, we would prefer to be anonymous. We have some... Uh, we have some reason to believe that... Uh, there are some folks who are very interested in following us. It's one of the reasons why we've been moving so much. Do you think the attack was directed at you? <sighs> Potentially. Possibility. Mm -hmm. And what makes you... What is putting you in this danger or making you so dangerous to someone that they choose to do this? How well can you keep a secret? Well, that's not really what my business is, but <laughs> I am very good at keeping my sources anonymous when necessary. <laughs> All right. I don't want to discourage you from telling me your whole story, but you must understand I'm <laughs> this is pretty much the opposite of the secrets business. Oh, it is, but... Some secrets do need to be kept. Absolutely. I want to keep the public informed. I don't want to put anyone in danger. <sighs> Have you ever heard of Jonathan Hammer? Oh, yes. Uh, I was very sorry to hear of his death a couple of months ago. <clears throat> um, he visited me last year. Did he now? Okay. So he wasn't entirely wrong about that. <coughs> I'll be honest. We're friends of his. And we are following up. Um, frankly, we have a vested interest in continuing his research. And uh, frankly, some of his notes leave something to be desired. So we are following his trail on the, uh, the Carlisle expedition. Yes, of course. <coughs> he did have some questions about that. Mm -hmm. and I don't like to speak ill of the dead. But as you're, as you're noting it, I must say, I had always heard of him as a very polite man. And he did not live up to that reputation. He was, didn't. He was pretty forceful and, I have to say, a bit rude when he was here. And I will look back at the other two at that one. When did he come out here again? Was that near the end? That was near the end. <sighs> you know, the thing that I was so happy in New York... Yeah, that would explain everything, because isn't this where the... Where the group is at? Isn't this where they are here? They're based here, kind of? Uh, I'm sorry, young man. Who are you asking about? Uh, this is... This is the last point of civilization that the Carlisle Expedition visited before their unfortunate deaths. That's what you... Question! Um, sorry. How much do you know about a cult called the Bloody Tongue? I'm afraid this is the first I've heard of it. Do you think that's something okay. local? It's um, something we've encountered different uh, versions of on our way here. All right. They were actually the ones that uh, they got to hammer. You're saying a religious group is the cause of his death. Religious cult is kind of more of a cult than a religion, in my opinion, but yeah, they're the ones who got to him. They um, used him as like a sacrifice. They kind of drew with a knife on his forehead. She is taking notes on all of this. We were, unfortunately, the ones who uh, found him as well. Mm -hmm. 
So when you say he was rude, was it that, like, could, could you tell me whether it was more that he seemed like an overly aggressive man, or did he seem frightened to you? Well, you've come in here, and you're asking me some of the same questions that he did, and telling me details around his investigation, and you've made pleasantries, and you've sat down and had a drink with me. He did none of that. He came in almost demanding answers. Um, demanding to look through my old files and notes. I see. So, no sense of social niceties whatsoever. No, I'm afraid not. This might have been before he started running into full trouble. At least with this cult. <clears throat> I think this is very likely when, uh... When he began to spiral away. I think you're right. Yeah, he I... was doing this all alone. I can tell you he, um... He visited with uh, Roger Corridon at the government house and with Captain Montgomery of the African Rifles at Fort Smith. Uh, oh, I right. that might be able to give you information on his specific investigations, or at least tell you what, what they told him. And their potential insight on his mental state at the time. Yes. Yes, perhaps. I will say he was in the business of investigating cults. It, frankly, it's only a matter of time that someone didn't take too kindly to his... P yes, I'm, I'm certain. As I understand it, most of the cults he investigated were some form of criminal enterprise um, that does always seem to be tied up with these things. It does indeed. <sighs> Cults never form for benign reasons. It's always something or another. And what is what is your opinion of the more spiritual side of cults? Well, I'd be lying if I said that I weren't a bit superstitious myself. And you? I can't deny that I don't know if it's superstitious exactly, but I, I myself, I consider myself to be somewhat sensitive to the spirits. Oh, do you? I do. Um, in fact, if you have unanswered questions about Mr. Hammer, I have once or twice in my life contacted a departed spirit. Oh, have you now? I'm just going to glance at the other two again and see what their interest in that kind of thing might be. I'm listening. Uh, I am not, um, I'm not a part of any spiritualist organization, but I have conducted seances, and uh, they are, as I'm sure you're aware, they're not always successful, but there have been times when I'm quite certain uh, that the spirit of a departed loved one, or even of someone that I had never met, was present in the room with us. All right. If you think it would be at all useful or give you any sort of closure, I'd be, I'd be happy to give it an attempt some, some evening. Well, I'm certainly not one to uh, look any potential avenue. Oh, what's the phrase? <laughs> look a gift horse in the mouth, I suppose. 
As for my experience with the supernatural, would you happen to have a trinket that belonged to uh, a family member, loved one, anything like that? Uh, she will look around her desk for a moment, and then she'll pick up a paperweight and hand it to you. All right. And I'm going to completely waste some <laughs> psychometry on this thing, see what I can get <laughs> out of it. <laughs> Go for it. It's not a waste if it gets you what you want. Yeah? Yeah. Especially if there's any chance that, uh, she's a, uh, believer who, uh, absolutely takes advantage of people. Oh. Oh, no. That, I, I'm not even gonna try to use luck on that one. I could, but I'm not going to because that's pretty definitive right there. Okay. So, well, here's the thing. You can, um, you can simply take that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Bless you, goodness. You sit there with the paperweight in your hand for a moment or two. You feel its weight. Uh, it's shaped. It's shaped like a British lion. It's a little obsidian lion. Hmm. But you just don't get any strong feelings from it. Now you can um, you can either accept that it's just not working right now, or you can try to push the roll. But you'd have to do something a little more drastic and accept a bad consequence if it doesn't work this time. Mm. It might be something along the lines of you drop and break the paperweight. Yeah. Just stand up, throw it against the wall. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um. can just accept a failure and move on, too. That's perfectly valid. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna accept the failure and move on. <laughs> that right. is a no- yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a fumble. Well, yeah, it's not a fumble, but it's pretty darn close. <laughs> so, after a moment, um, you admit failure and you head back to her. She doesn't yeah. look impressed, but she says, well, dear, I, I do understand it doesn't always work. I've it doesn't, unfortunately. Myself. I'll just and go some of that's the... the first time I've seen that not work for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> considering, I'm actually uh, a nice. c considering some of the other things that I've uh, been uh, feeling out lately, I'm kind of glad that I didn't get much from this. <laughs> well, this... This just belonged to my late husband. Well, it's a very, very handsome piece of work. Thank you, I quite agree. Uh, now, you said you're continuing his work, not just investigating his own murder. We, we are doing both, frankly. We are investigating the notes that he left behind for us, which leave quite a bit to be desired, frankly. I can believe um, it. It started out fantastic and just slowly became more and more uh, upsetting, frankly. I, I don't believe that uh, he was the same man that we knew beforehand. And you're saying that this is a cult that's present in multiple places around the world. It's not localized in any way. That is... Well, I'm no expert. They're different cults, but they all share 
A similarity. They all talk to each other in a way. How strange. They don't always oh, go is... by the the same name. Like here, there's possibly one that went by the bloody ton that was also in New York. Uh, and then there was mm -hmm. one in England and Egypt that were the same. Uh, they're like a brotherhood of some sort. But they also had connections to the Bloody Ton. It's almost like there are different factions of the cult, which all go by different names, but are working towards the same goal. That is fascinating. And you, do you think they were responsible for murdering the, uh, the Carlisle expedition as well? I believe, as far as I'm aware, that was some Mandy tribesmen. Are they? Is that connected? I. We we feel that it is very very likely connected. At um, this point, yes. In some way, it is connected. And I've frankly encountered uh, more than enough cases of. Uh, the wrong folks being accused of crimes especially over the course of these investigations hmm. Hmm. well they were convicted and hanged as i recall so that would be a tragic miscarriage of justice <sighs> and frankly in america we have those all the time yes it's not I'm afraid it's not unique to any part of the world. Mm -hmm. Ah, let me see. Now, I can dig through my archives for more details if you need them, but I am the sole reporter on this paper. So, from what I can recall, uh, Carlisle said that he brought his expedition here to confirm some data that they found in Egypt on a religious leader who migrated south into Kenya. Really? I'm going to remind you all that you have journals now. We do. Yes. We do, we do, we do. Okay. I know that while they were here, they stayed at Hampton House, which is a, um, a sort of lower class hotel here in town. All right. They dealt, I remember they dealt with Dr. Horace Starrett over at the Mission House and Mr. German at the Government House. Um, while she's talking to you, she's heading over and digging through all her archives. Uh, okay. She comes up with a... No, I don't actually have a picture for this one. It's just described. But she comes up with an article about the departure of the, um, of the expedition from Nairobi. Uh, with most of the principles in it, uh, f in a rare... In a bit of a rare detail, uh, James, in the background of this picture, you can see your mother. Uh, Hypatia Masters is standing next to her and appears to be supporting her a bit. All right. I will. I will ask. Um, do you know what happened at this time? Well, this, in this is. Image? This is when they were about to head off on their safari. This is, I'm afraid, not long before uh, they passed away. Uh, they were heading on the safari into the Great Rift Valley. Uh, they said for relaxation. And, and also confirming some data, you said? Well, they told me that they, the reason they came to Kenya was to uh, confirm some data that they found in Egypt about a religious leader who came south. 
uh, when they went into the Great Rift Valley, that was for uh, rest and relaxation. They said that they'd had a stressful time in Egypt and then here, and that they needed to take some time to recover. I believe Mr. Right. Carlo was always rather delicate. Um. Now, she pulls out another paper from sometime later. This is months later. Uh, and this is a report about the finding of the massacre site. Uh, Lieutenant Mark Selkirk led a squad of men who actually found the remains. All right. And uh, there is no no picture available of the site of the actual massacre, but she there is a photograph printed on the front page of the uh, of the hanging. Dark. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> When they were here, they were, they were strange. I thought that they were fairly unhealthy. Uh, I'm not, I never, I never really met this, uh, this lady that Miss Masters is next to in this photo. I believe that she was sick much of the time that they were here. Indisposed in the mornings, if you follow. Uh, I see. I saw Carlisle pretty rarely. He was a nervous young man, and he liked his whiskey. And Sir Aubrey, he had dealings with people not at all of his station. He had uh, Tan Carr, a slimy little woman, was at Hampton House a lot. She was a, a mere tea peddler associating with a peer. She's still in Nairobi. She might be able to tell you what they talked about, but I'm sure I don't want to know. Hmm. Perhaps we should save that for, uh, near to the end of our trip. <laughs> This might just be either racism or classism. You can't be sure. Mm-hmm. It's definitely classism. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is British. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she is as nice and can be expected from somebody of her station. She says, this is, um, this is about what I have close to hand. If you'd like, I can, if there's anything in particular you'd like to know, I can see, read through my notes from the time. I'm sure that we would love to see more of your notes from that time period. Uh, would, would you like us to give you a couple days to get those together? Oh, we yes, we certainly course. have other avenues of questioning to go attend to, so... There's certainly no rush. Yes, um... And if you... I understand you want to keep your paper names out of the papers for now, but uh, if I can... If I can print some of your statements as an anonymous source, and if you can, at a future date, when you're ready to, grant me an interview about what you experienced on the train, that would be very helpful to me. I think of great interest to the people of the city. I wouldn't mind. I certainly don't mind anything being published anonymously. Wonderful. Yeah. And at a future date, I will be more than happy to give you a full interview. Perfect. And if, um, you'll have to let me know with some time to prepare, but if you would like to attempt to contact Mr. Hammer, um, we can make an attempt. 
I, I say we phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad idea. Give her a couple days to uh, prep for that, and then go ahead and uh, see how well that works. Sounds good. Are you about done in here? Yes. Yes, dear. All right. As you are gathering up and um, saying your goodbyes, there's a bit of commotion over by the door. Uh, in fact, the door is kicked open. Right, row. And you barely have time to make out uh, not enormous, but a very large, very red British man dressed in <laughs> full safari gear stomps into the office and blasts a hole in the ceiling with an elephant gun. Excuse me? Oh, yeah. I'm drawing my pistol. You yeah, he, checking the ammo in his revolver. He's not even looking. Like, you you can pull out your pistol. He's not even looking at you. He slams the butt of his gun into the ground, and he says, You goddamn journalist in here destroying my reputation! Destroying my very ability to make a living! This is calumny! Uh, he goes on in this vein, turning redder and redder until he looks like a brick house. His mustache is bristling in anger. <laughs> I haven't pulled out my gun yet. Yeah. Connor's just sliding in rounds into his revolver from the, from the rounds that he emptied into the elemental. He has turned his chair around and he's we sat have, back watching the man. We have all taken cover behind the desk. I have dragged our new journalist friend in next to us and have my pistol drawn. Uh... <laughs> he he continues to yell and he's like pounding the butt of his rifle on the ground as he's making his points. Uh, he's not making any attempt to reload it. He doesn't appear to be pointing the gun at anybody. This is an enormous drunk man venting his anger at the world and at the unfairness of this newspaper in particular. Uh, at some point you make out he is yelling about uh, how she is printing lies about his... Uh, she is printing lies. She doesn't understand that sometimes people just die out in the jungle. It's nothing nefarious. It's nothing to do with me. It's a dangerous place. Cutter is qu going it's to quietly funny. mutter, uh, say to the journalist, you know, you could probably get him to pay to repair that, that ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's crashed down with you, but she doesn't look that afraid. She says, yeah, it's like, we're all just casual about it. We're hiding behind it. Dude's got an elephant gun and is drunk and angry. Oh, I'm certainly filing suit against him. He's filed. <laughs> he's come in here to register, register complaints before, but this is beyond the pale. So, uh, uh, I take I've... it we don't need to worry that we are under attack at the moment. Oh, I don't think he's drunk enough for that yet. Yeah. Uh, let's get <laughs> Connor. Connor <laughs> smiles to himself. All right. Well, let's get him there. And Connor. I will. Uh... All right, Connor. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, Connor's gonna just walk up to the guy, and he's going to like put on the mask of somebody that is also a little tipsy. Okay. Like as he walks forward, he progressively gets drunker while walking towards the man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, he, he stops slamming his gun into the ground and says, At last, someone with the stones to come talk to me! <laughs> uh, Con uh, Connor. I know exactly. Like, <laughs> Connor is going to, like, be on his level. Somebody that was lied to about in this paper and <laughs> actually came here to drunkenly complain to. And like, yeah, we're we're the same, and you know, like, to like get him to the yeah, 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 and then just slowly start charming him to leave with him. This sounds like fast <laughs> talk, but he yeah. is in, he is drunk and inclined to this. Like, you're choosing the right tactic with him, so take a bonus yeah. die on it. Hell yeah. <laughs> 
All right, where's my fast talk? I have not done this before. <laughs> <laughs> An Irish man who hasn't fast talked. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I know, right? All right, there we go. Oh, uh, so, somebody stop me from saying these things. <laughs> uh, oh, there it is. Plus one. Roll. Oh, yeah. He's all in. <laughs> hey. um, yeah, so you can go back and forth with him a little bit, uh, venting your complaints about the newspaper, and I assume at some point you suggest, hey, why don't we go get a drink together? <laughs> Let's, let's get a drink together and talk about this. I know hey. just a place! <laughs> hey! I also put away my gun whenever he says it, too. <laughs> my gun was still out. Uh, he'll, he'll crack open his gun and take out the empty shells. He doesn't reload it. Uh, he leaves it yeah. over his shoulder and walks off with you. <laughs> Uh, May I ask who that was? That was. Well, you're was asking that. James Endicott. is just gonna. Yes, James. James is just gonna walk over to where the hole in the ceiling is and just kind of look up and be like, "Oh, that's." I didn't think it could do that much damage. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a big. <laughs> yeah, it's an elephant. Gun. Those things are like us hiding behind that desk does nothing. It does nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, hiding behind cover with an elephant gun is only to hide parts of your body from him, <laughs> not to like shield yourself from the bullet. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it is a two-story building. You can see this the sky from here. There isn't like blood dripping down or anything, right? No. It appears yeah, nobody that the got second it. story is empty. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, she, that's Colonel Endicott. He runs a game lodge out in the jungle around here. I see. And he is angry with me because I've reported that some of the people who've gone out to his game lodge don't come back. I have not accused him of murder or anything nefarious, but I feel it's my duty to warn people when an activity is dangerous. <laughs> he seems to have taken some offense with that. <laughs> you noticed that, did you? <laughs> that is also some. the impression that I got. I don't think my fist could make that hole. <laughs> Do you want one? Because <laughs> we could probably find you one. No, I don't think I could handle that. <laughs> yeah, that gun, that gun kicks. I think that I would fly back while that the gun's still in the air like a cartoon. <laughs> Oh, something right out of a John Chaplin skit. <laughs> uh, Connor, <sighs> you are going to find this is a this is a large man. Oh yeah. Whether he can hold his liquor is an open question, but he can certainly put it away. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We're I'm basically getting free drinks out of the man to get his side of the story too. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and and also assure that no one's getting shot today. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Uh... Are you are you basically just gonna let him talk about anything he wants to? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just. I, I am his drinking buddy, and drinking buddies just complain to each other about various things. Okay. Then yeah, um, he does keep like he does keep coming back to the Nairobi Star and Miss Forbes, uh, Smythe Forbes, and like you'll see him turn and yell in the direction of the newspaper when he does that. 
we are super far away from the newspaper. Oh she yeah, this is a few water. blocks away. <laughs> uh, but some people have died out at his lodge. It's not his fault. Clearly, he had nothing to do with it. Uh, he is very offended that anybody would suggest that. <laughs> But uh, sometimes when you go out in the jungle and you hunt animals at night, they hunt you back. Uh, and as the evening goes on, you will eventually learn that um, he loves Africa. He really does. But... The continent has taken a lot from him. Uh, his wife and his child passed away here from disease. Um, he has spent he he came to Africa with quite a lot of money. Most of it is gone at this point. He is just making a living by running a game lodge for people to come on safari and uh, hunt some animals with him. And he feels very strongly that with the with the the bad publicity going around about his uh, his safari, his, his game lodge, he's going to be in trouble. It's not going to last much longer. Uh, yeah, I mean, Connor is just going to, like, listen to him complain about some of his woes, which are almost entirely fabricated. So that, you know, like, we, we're, we're like, one and the same. <laughs> so he opens up more about things. And, um, yeah, whenever Connor, uh, whenever he gets down to that, he, he's going to ask, uh, uh, how did the people... Uh, how did the people uh, die while uh, hunting? Did they just get lost, or were they attacked or something? Mm. Well, I don't know exactly. They um, they were partially eaten, so oh. I assume it was. Um, I assume it was. Either big cats or some other carnivorous creature. There are jackals out there. Uh, Connor uh, will appear to be in deep thought and suggest, why don't you, uh, one, uh, whenever, you know, my group are situated, you'll, uh, have our, uh, group go on a, uh, go on a trip together, and I can then turn around and talk to the newspaper that it's entirely safe and nothing bad happens. It would right. help reclaim some of your bad name, and, you know. He he pounds you on the back, he tells you, that sounds wonderful, <laughs> but you have to listen to I? me. If some of these people didn't listen to me. You don't, don't stay out at the hunting platform overnight. Real quick, I'm going to check my character's survival. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I just signed up to something that is almost guaranteed to get him killed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> spot a pan. Navigate. He's got good navigation, but no natural. Also, Ooh, that's no interesting. World. I'm also not great with a shotgun or a rifle. Handguns <laughs> are the thing that I'm good at. Yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah, so you can hunt the big uh, thing with a, with a pistol. You cannot! <laughs> you can make the big game angry with a pistol. <laughs> but yeah, Connor, uh, Connor will admit that he has uh, 
no real experience in this field, so he would, of course, listen to the person that knows what he's doing. Wonderful. Some of these people come out, they hire me to, to show them how to hunt these animals, and then they don't listen to me when I tell them what's too dangerous. If you stay in the lodge at night, don't go out to the viewing platform, you'll be fine. Uh, I think we can all can, can follow that rule. <laughs> no problems here. Yeah. Yeah, he will let you know he. Uh, he's going to be in town overnight. He'll be heading back out to his lodge tomorrow. If you want to go with him, you're welcome. Otherwise, he'll be back in town next week. Okay. <coughs> All right. How about back in the newspaper? <clears throat> Do you two pretty much take your leave at this point? Yep we we yeah. we set the uh, we we set the date for when we're gonna try and talk with Hammer. And um, what day do you want to meet that? It's gonna be an uh, evening. It's gotta be spooky time. Yeah, you can't have you can't have a seance during the day whenever it's safe and everyone can see. Uh, if you rested <laughs> two days, it is now Thursday the fourteenth. Let's say let's do it Saturday night. Saturday. That works for her. That There's should, not much nightlife. That here. should all. Yeah, that should also give her plenty of time to look through her notes for more stuff for us. While still doing her job. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, oh, that... are you sad because I stopped cuddling? You want me to keep cuddling? Uh, all right. Uh, Connor eventually, Undercut, does um, realize he should take care of. He came to town to get supplies. He should really take care of that before he passes out. So he's going to. <laughs> He's going to thank yeah. you for your time, tell you you're not bad for an Irishman, and then head off into the city. <laughs> <laughs> the, the smile becomes more forced than normal. <laughs> the man has no social graces whatsoever. Oh, yeah, no. Hey. But, you know, hey. th those kind of characters are way more lovable <laughs> than a lot of other characters. We'll see. We'll see hey. how you feel about it later. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 Kana. Mm -hmm. We might be able to end all of his troubles. <laughs> <laughs> Consider that. <laughs> it was another hunting accident. <laughs> he was on the viewing port, uh, viewing platform. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> he did what he said we were not supposed to do to go and prove a point. Yeah, so, yeah. Con Connor. Proven. <laughs> Connor is just you no know, like while he's walking away from the bar, his fit smile is going to fade away, and he's gonna pull out a cigarette and light it. <laughs> <laughs> just mat m mutter underneath his breath, jackass. <laughs> like, Various Irish curses. <laughs> yeah, just just talking to himself in Irish about that whole situation. <laughs> Uh... God. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like the quest log. It is really cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Too. This is uh, the Ripper ninety three makes it. It's <laughs> nice. So. Uh... Okay. <laughs> what else do you want to do today? We've still got 15 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, besides, you know, Connor uh, giving Birdie the word on uh, what that guy was all about and that I might have signed us up for something to see if it's actually dangerous or safe. Well, of course it's dangerous. You can't go hunting and not have risk of something bad happening. 
Yeah, but there's a lot more people going missing, and the man seems to have fallen on some really, really bad luck. Multiple people dying, lo losing his wife and kid to illness. It seems like the Fair. kind of stuff we would look into. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm Bernie, not saying we don't look into it. Mrs. Smythe Forbes can t can have told you that there have been 12 deaths since 1919. So 12 deaths in the past six years. <coughs> Goodness. Yeah, that's almost double the natural rate for a mm -hmm. city. So yeah, let's uh, you know, for, for... a town of eight thousand, and to have that many deaths on hunting trips. Yeah, that's that. That is way more than normal. A little brutal. But it's, it is a jungle uh, out there, so. And, and Connor is going to while while giving this you know big spiel about the guy and kind of complaining about him every now and then being super unokay about the whole Irish thing. <laughs> he is going to uh, stop and, and do any of us know about how to hunt or walk a trail or camp? Well. We kind of did that a little bit in uh, when we first met up. True, but we had a guide, and this seems a lot more dangerous than in Peru. Oh, come on. Well, I we mean... the dead chasing after us. In, per in Peru, it got a lot more dangerous than just camping. So I and think we can handle we it. Have, and now we have fire demons coming after us. Yeah, so Speaking the safest of, we should get a... We, we should get a few more wool blankets. <laughs> a couple wool blankets, <laughs> canteens of water. Uh. An empty bucket. I'll go and just scoop up some sand or dirt. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> it is not uh, standard equipment, but if you ask, you can have buckets of water in your roofs. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they ask why, we're like, it's just occasionally, you know, convenient to wash yourself off in the middle of this humid, humid climate to wash yourself from the sweat. <laughs> you know, it's just a quick bath kind of thing. I was going to say, we just want some water around for the cat. <laughs> true, true. You also yeah. did get the expensive hotel, so you each have bathrooms connected to your rooms with running water. Just casually fill up my bathtub, keep it full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, I will, and, I'll and, note that you did that. That's a good idea. <laughs> and uh, Connor will uh, also add um, of all of the people that I've had to have a private conversation with on this trip so far, he's been the most sane. <laughs> he shot a hole through the ceiling. I did not stutter. <laughs> I mean, did you he care? was an ang He's not he was wrong. An, he, he was an angry British man that's lost everything in the, in the course of six years. That's more believable than a man that uh, is slowly losing his faith because of a cult. Uh, a <laughs> just starts that's, you know, that's listing fair. a man that was willfully being sucked dry by a fat sucker. Uh, like, like <laughs> you're starting to realize all of the men that Connor has had a polite conversation with in private have always been like crazy. Hey, Connor, are you all right? <laughs> Let's just real quick look. I'm about half okay. <laughs> <coughs> We, uh, we, we might need to fix that a little bit. Oh. I'm, I'm still at almost 90 sanity. <laughs> yeah, Connor is like 53 out of 60 now. No, 76, sorry. Dyslexia got my ass on that. I have 76 sanity, Max. That's... 76. Whew. 
yeah th those that those uncovering the truth about the what's really out there shit is really kicking connor's ass and he is not designed to learn about what's actually out there <laughs> It just keeps uh, happening to him. Unfortunately, it, your int means that you are designed to learn about it. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, he the will remember of, everything. The curse of actually being the smartest one in the group. <laughs> I, I honestly think it's not a steel stomach that keeps Connor sober. It's his fucking intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You cannot kill brain cells if they're stronger than alcohol. <laughs> On the upside, on the upside, this does mean that we are sticking with the Lovecraft theme of the Irish are crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I was, I was a hundred percent expecting Connor to lose his mind way worse at this point. Mm -hmm. Like I was expecting Connor to have gone bad guy, because you know <laughs> I I don't I don't play safe whenever I play these games. I do crazy weird things. One of these times you'll start casting your spells and then it'll just accelerate. Oh yeah, I've I've cast it a couple <laughs> times and it 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 is devastating every time I do it. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. uh... One time, I'm just going to be annoyed one time about not being able to read something and I'm going to lose my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but what about in the game? <laughs> oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we're going to retire back to the hotel, uh, debrief, and mm -hmm. yeah, Birdie's just gonna look at Connor. Are you all right, James? Are you all right? What <laughs> do, do we need? Do we need to call it quits? No. Yeah, Connor. Connor's I doing the uh, going forward. Connor's doing the leaning forward, elbows on knee, knee, leg bounce thing, and he's thinking to himself about, "Am I okay? I haven't slowed down for months. <laughs> I haven't like looked inward at myself. Do I need a mental health day?" <laughs> uh, yes, James was isn't leaning to be the forward. He isn't leaning back. He's just still just sitting there he's just like no i think we need to still keep pushing forward yeah connor nods uh, connor nods at that he he'll uh say uh, casually that uh he is okay like I, it's hard summoning connor, connor's voice but uh, i am okay i uh <clears throat> I just need a little bit of a rest, I think. Uh, a lot of bad luck over the course of this month or two. And, uh... I'll be okay, Bird. You better be. You know, being possessed a couple times and... Doing and saying things you wouldn't wish you, anyone would ever do. Does a does something to a man, but I'm still here. Like he's scratching his knuckles <clears throat> because they they're itching from healing. <laughs> yeah. At that point. Mm -hmm. Not to go soft on either of you, but uh, <laughs> I do want you to know that you're important to me, and I want you to both be all right. And if we need to take a bit. We can take a bit. <sighs> Lucky for us, I gave myself uh, and I, I gave us uh, a good time frame for uh, when we'll be doing the camping trip with the uh, hunter man. And also opened it up to us not doing it at all. Because it was promised while we were both drunk. <laughs> That's fair. That That's a good move. And we're going to be uh, getting some more uh, ghost stuff going on. This Saturday's when uh, 
our report of new reporter friend is going to be uh, trying to get in touch with Hammer for us. So we'll see how that goes. Hi. Right. we play next it will be friday uh you can decide what investigations you want to make either with the local government or some of the other individuals in the uh in hammer's notes but uh oh yeah thank, thank you all for playing tonight yeah thank you had for a, running <clears throat> this was a good one i think oh well, yeah good well. character building session yeah, good stuff. Anything to say before we go off the air? Uh, fuck colonialism? Uh, check the sanity of your friends and family. <laughs> and Watch how much you, you drink when with... you go and blow a hole in the ceiling with an elephant gun. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>